This Artillery 3D X1 is getting auto bed leveling and it's a shootout between the Touch Me and a BL Touch. This Artillery 3D X1 Sidewinder was a printer that I quite liked when I reviewed it. Now some users reported issues with Z banding along the vertical surfaces. I didn't have that, but I still applied the free fix sent out by the company. All printers now come standard with this fix, as you can see on the website. And for existing customers, a G-code file and video instructions were emailed out. This made it quick, easy and free to upgrade the printer. And that's the way it should be. My results are definitely good. There's no hint of Z banding at all. I also replaced this noisy mainboard cooling fan with a 5 volt Noctua. It's now very quiet and this is easy to do because there's 5 volt output on the MKS Gen L mainboard. Take note that the sticker should face out because this fan acts as an exhaust rather than blowing air in. Another great thing that's happened for this printer has been the release of the Marlin Source firmware from the company on their website. That means that I can add auto bed leveling, which is probably one of the only features I thought was missing from this printer when I reviewed it. Recently, I made a video with the Ender 3 where I tested out the Touch Me, and the results were not so good. In this video, I'm going to test it again with much better results, and in fact, I'm going to do a back to back comparison with a BL Touch. I'm also going to show you how to adjust your Z offset by customizing the MKS TFT screen, which is on this printer, as well as what I put on my Ender 3. Let's get into the comparison where we're going to look at installation, firmware changes, as well as repeatability and results. And to get started, we're going to look at some 3D printed parts that I've designed to allow you to fit either of these ABL options. Prototyping this from scratch took me at least a dozen iterations, but I got it there. The final design caters for the Touch Me and BL Touch. There are four parts in total. You'll need the base two for each, plus a magnet mount for the Touch Me. And for the BL Touch, you'll need the base parts plus the BL Touch mount. Installation starts the same for both, which is removing the screw that holds on the part cooling fan in the top left hand corner. You will need slightly longer M3 hardware to continue from this point. We're going to take the lock apart, turn it around and insert an M3 nut. It's designed to slide precisely up and down from the rear. The Touch Me is also designed to slide from the front. Now we use a screw to reach through and to lock the two together. We're not trying to do it too tight at this phase, we still need it to be able to slide up and down for adjustment later on. Our base mount now goes over the fan and we use that longer M3 bolt to secure it back to the 3D printer head. It's important to get this tight so nothing can wobble around. Time for the final height adjustment for the Touch Me sensor. You're going to manually lower down the nozzle till it touches the bed and then I got a 2.5mm hex key and adjusted the Touch Me probe tip so it was just touching and then tightened the bolt for good. The included wiring loom for the Touch Me has three colors and you need to ensure you have the red for 5 volts facing the left when you plug it onto the pins on top of the probe. Next we're going to prepare our magnet holder and there's a little part that is designed to be sliced open with an X-Acto so the magnet can insert in so this part is now ready to fit to the machine. There's an unused bolt hole, any M5 bolt will do the trick in holding this part in place. Now when we home X, the magnet is attracted, the ball bearing lifts up and the probe drops down. Onto the mainboard wiring and we're going to unplug the Z-Min end stop plug and instead plug in the short white extension cable with the same connector. Make sure it's plugged in securely to ensure reliability. Use this wiring diagram to plug in the lead from the Touch Me into that cable. We want red on the top, black in the middle and the yellow signal cable on the bottom when viewed from this orientation. Your Touch Me is installed. Mounting the BL Touch is very similar with this system. We start by once again removing that bolt holding on the fan and I've pre-installed the BL Touch onto the printed mount for that that's included in this set. That is designed to slide from the front up and down and once again we use a shorter M3 screw to lock the two together. We're not going to do it too tight, we still want them to slide up and down to set our final height later on. We now mount it back on the machine, once again using a longer M3 bolt to hold it firmly in place so it can't wobble around. Like with the Touch Me, we're going to set our desired height. And this is a version 3 probe, so once the nozzle is touching the bed, I'm aiming for a clearance of 4mm. I used a 4mm hex key to measure this, and then I tightened up everything really well so it couldn't wobble around and affect accuracy. On an MKS Gen L board, you'll need to slice off the right hand tab 
on the connector that goes into the end stop plug. Everything is now plug and play. The black and white wires go into the Z end stop and the rest plugging into servo zero as shown. Here it is in real life. You can see the top pin is skipped after plugging in the black and white plug and it's hard to see, but servo zero is plugged into the BL touch below. Now for this video, I've done something really dodgy and in between the probe and the main board, I've got temporary wiring. And that's because this printer has really nice ribbon cables, probably the best cable management I've seen on a 3D printer, and I don't want to ruin that. Therefore, I've ordered some ribbon cable as well as some connectors, and here's how I plan to do things later on. I'm going to run one continuous length of ribbon cable inside the existing ribbon cable and tape down with black tape so it's concealed. Should be super neat. Hopefully the work I've put into the development makes this a painless option for you and you can choose from either ABL system. Now let's move on to firmware. And the first thing you should do is grab a copy of the factory firmware from their website. Now I've covered how to set up in Marlin the TouchMe as well as the BL Touch before. So I'm gonna keep this video fairly brief, offering more of a summary. But don't worry, copies of the firmware for both of these options is available down below in the description for free. Just click the link. Before we get started, let's have a look at what we need to do to customize our MKS TFT screen that comes with this printer to set it up for ABL, as well as adding custom buttons for baby stepping and setting your Z offset. When you download the firmware, you need to open the mksconfig.txt file. Everything is already set up for this printer, so the only changes we're making are for auto bed leveling. And the first thing we do is set our configuration to a one for auto. Lower down, we can see where they've set up the custom LED control buttons and these are used to control the RGB LED while the printer is running. We're going to add further buttons for controlling baby stepping. On this menu at the moment, there's two for turning on and off the LED. Button five, we're going to set to be M500, which will save our Z offset to EEPROM. We simply edit the line for more function five to M500. Now we're going to set up M290, which alters the relative baby step. And to achieve this, we're going to have M290 Z 0.05. That's gonna lift up by that amount. And if we have minus 0.05, that's gonna lower by that amount. We also need to specify that now we have five custom buttons. In the files I've provided for download, I've included the three custom buttons you need to show up on your TFT screen. To update the TFT screen firmware, we simply copy all of these files onto an SD card and then we put them into the printer. When we power it on, it will detect that there's update files and this is sped up, it will take a few minutes, but eventually everything will finish and it will reboot with your new configuration. We know the changes have taken effect over standard because now on the main menu, we have an auto level button. Mid print from the more menu, we should now have three new buttons. I'll explain how to use these later in the video. Onto the Marlin firmware. And I found a couple of things that were a little bit different to usual. Firstly, for ABL, we need to search for Zmin end stop inverting and set that to false. We need to define EEPROM settings so we can save our Z offset. And we also need to enable baby stepping so we can change our Z offset easily. Here is a summary of all of the firmware changes I need to do for each of these systems. Remember these files are available for download for free in the description, but in case you're setting it up manually, you go to the files as listed there and you search for each of these and get them to match. The important thing is for my system, the offset of the probe for each one is going to be minus 52 for X and minus 27 for Y. This printer has a bootloader, so the only thing you need to do is unplug the TFT screen so it doesn't compete for the serial port before you press upload on Marlin. Simply select 2560 mega from the drop-down menu and you click upload. We're just about ready to print. All we need to do now is update the start G code on our slicing software to add a G29 after the G28 for homing. And that counts for both of these printers. For the touch me, we additionally need to add a G1Z 0.5 and then something like a G1Z5 to lower down the nozzle and lift it back up. And this will have the effect of stowing the probe so it doesn't collide with anything during the print. Let's have a look at how our LCD now works for setting the offset on either system. I've got my favorite testing X that I squish down to one layer and to fill up the bed. While your object is printing, it's time to access the LCD. You're going to click option and then more, and then we have the up and down buttons to raise and lower the nozzle until we have the perfect amount of squish on our first layer. Once we're happy with this, we then press the save to EEPROM button 
and the Z offset will be stored for future prints. You're aiming for this single layer to peel off to have all of the extrusions together, but not so tight that they're over extruded and lumpy. So we've looked at how to get both systems fitted. So how do they compare with each other? Well, we're gonna look at repeatability and accuracy with an M40A test, as well as some printed results. M48 is something I searched for and enabled in the firmware, and this is how it works. When we enter a plain M48, it probes up and down on the spot and then gives you some statistics. If we enter an M48S1, it moves around violently between probes and delivers the same statistics. I did both of these tests five times each. The upper half are for the straight up and down probing, and what you're looking for here is a small range and standard deviation. As you can see, the BL touch is very slightly better. The lower five results are from the moving around variation, and as you can see, the touch me is very slightly better. In the real world, these things are incredibly close, and you probably won't notice any appreciable difference. The accuracy measured here is easily good enough for our application. So how did the X test go? Well, I did three or four for each printer, and every time they were perfectly consistent. They peeled off nicely, all of the individual extrusions were joined without being overdone. This type of repeatability is what ABL is all about. Here are the ones for the BL Touch. As you can see, they worked out exactly the same. It was a win for both systems here. I couldn't separate them at all. So what about real world printing? To test this, I printed two vases per system and once again, they both turned out flawlessly. In summary, everything I threw at both systems worked perfectly. The prints were repeatable and accurate and that's exactly what we're aiming for by fitting ABL. There we have it. This time round, the Touch Me performs just as well as the BL Touch. What's different from last time? Well, in terms of my setup and what I've done, absolutely nothing. And I'm completely baffled what went wrong with the Ender 3, and so is the creator of the Touch Me. One important thing to note is that they will look after their customers, and you should email them if you're having issues like I had with my last experience. It's also worth noting that they'll give you a copy of the firmware setup for the Touch Me, and that includes a custom LCD menu for setting it up more effectively. So if the performance is the same, what one would I choose? Well, the BL Touch has the advantage that I can print the whole way over to the zero point of the X axis without worrying about the probe accidentally deploying from touching the magnet. The Touch Me, however, is cheaper, and as I've seen in this video, it's a very effective option. I guess they should be the two things that help you decide which way you're going to go. Either way, hopefully this video and the printed parts I've designed make it easy for you if you own this printer to fit some ABL. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.